interesting things, Billy. Virginia Tech has 12 rebounds. Indiana State only three. Virginia Tech has five turnovers. Indiana State two. But ball game. As a matter of fact, as a team, Virginia Tech may leap as well as anybody around. If the guards can really get up. So therefore, when the guy goes inside, they can come from anywhere to block the shot. Those are yesterday's scores you're looking at there now, including that big upset of Iowa by Toledo at the buzzer. There's the 2-3 zone again on the out-of-bounds situation. Almost another turnover. 8-8 eight to eight the score. Virginia Tech down 6-2, to two, took the lead 8-6, to six, and now it's 8-8. Eight to eight. All loose for the shot. His basket from the side. It goes in and out, and look at the leapers under there. Picked up by Carl Nix. And now you can notice him to see Nix slow down and yep. wait for everybody. That was a very important timeout. They want to get Bird down here in the double stack, and he pops on out. What makes him so tough? He doesn't use his dribble until he occupies you with a fake. Gilbert on the pass. That is going to count. That's goal telling for give Alex Gilbert his first two points. And it's 10 8. Hanson can really get off the floor. Only about 6'5", but quite a leap. Virginia Tech, winner of the Metro Conference Tournament, beating Louisville in the semifinals. Florida State in the finals. There's Dexter Reed shooting. No good Larry Bird up for the rebound. There's Nix. He going to pull up? Oh, he's walking. He wanted to take the shot, and realized he, that nobody was down court with him, so he stopped, and that was it. He wanted to pull up and take that shot. You're right, Jim, and advanced it one dribble too far. Bob Heaton, great competitor for Indiana State, is up and will be coming soon shortly. There's Solomon shooting again. This time it's off the back, and look at Robinson get the rebound and follow with a shot. Good! Wayne Robinson has four points and ten all. The guy that's going to have a tough job is Brad Miley. Robinson and Solomon are really physical athletes. Miley a little bit smaller, not quite as powerful, and so Bird is the one being called upon to get all the tough rebounds. Three, there's Miley on the far side. Don't it for his defense, not for his score. From outside, Steve Green. He doesn't shoot often, but when he does, he's hot. His first point. It's 12-10, the Sycamores. Henson on the far side. Henson takes the shot. He forced it, but when he get that kind of result, so what? I don't think Gilbert expected him to release. Also getting up is Leroy Staley getting ready to come in. Or Indiana State. Reed. Ball intercepted by Reed. Dexter Reed. Dexter Reed is number 11 for Virginia Tech. R-E-I-D. Steve Reed, 23 for Indiana State. R-E-D. And Steve Reed comes out, and Gilbert comes out, and going in, Staley, number 44. At number 30, Bob Eaton. He's the man of the New Mexico State game. Hit the 50-footer at the buzzer that sent it in overtime and helped keep Indiana State undefeated. Staley's just in there, didn't take a shot. It's wide open. Now forces the ball into Miley, and Nix is going to take the long jumper from outside. No good. Bird goes up. Ball is away. Battle for, and Bird's got it again. Oh, a pass for Dexter Reed, but it's completely. That was an excellent pass that time, but a super play by Dexter Reed because he anticipated Bird being the passer that he is. Solomon. Bounce pass into Robinson over Bird. Wayne Robinson strong, and he's a tough man on the knee. It's 14 for Virginia Tech. You can see that Charlie Morris is going to take the ball inside against Larry Bird. Here's that double stack again, Jim. And there's the ACC North Carolina. Picked by Billy Packer to win it all, beating Penn 12-6. Here's Heaton, his first shot. Oh, my. They're going to have a lot of gold tennis today. Get two points for Bobby. And they're trying to tell Henson to stay on the floor and go for the rebound. Anytime a man stands right into the basket and goes up for the block, he's always... present the best in college basketball. This afternoon, the Shockers of Wichita State versus Indiana State Sycamores. Brought to you by Pabst Blue Ribbon. Pabst is brewed to be the best, naturally, with no artificial ingredients, and you can taste it. By Gillette Atra, for closeness with comfort, it's Gillette's best shade. By Ford and your Ford dealer, who invite you to see and test drive the all-new LTD and Mustang now. And by Allstate Insurance Company. You're in good hands with Allstate. <laughs> You are looking.
looking in on a very frantic Wabash Valley area. This is the first time that Indiana State Sycamores have ever been on national television. And are they ready? They think they're number one. And they hope to prove today by remaining undefeated that they are number one. Hello, everyone. I'm Jim Simpson. And working with me is Al McGuire. And Al is the man that I said could be elected president because he says they should be number one. But there is another team here, Al, and that is Wichita State. And smile when you say cheese. Well, Cheese Johnson is originally from Harlem, the streets of Harlem. He ended up on the plains of Kansas. He's a high school All-American. He's dynamite inside. If you get the ball to him, he's going to score. He can stick his jumper from about 18 feet. He has incredible hang time. So I hope everyone has the wine because Wichita has bought the cheese. we got to remember also that when Wichita State was beaten by Indiana State by 10 points early in the season, Cheese Johnson did not play. Now we come to the subject of... This is bird country. Oh, this is bird watching country, but this is a rare bird. There's a media called Haley's, Me Haley's Comet that appears once every 76 years. And that's what they call him down here, Haley's Comet. He has unbelievable ability, and welcome to Larry's world. Well, they're going to try to remain undefeated. We will tell you again that Al McGuire could be elected president. Billy Packer has said, no, Indiana State has not played the schedule. Well, take a look now. This is a T-shirt that many people are wearing here today. And you should see the handkerchiefs we have tucked in our pocket. And you should see the game, which you're going to see when we come back to frantic Indiana State after this call. The nicknames of the Shockers and the Sycamores. The Shockers of Wichita State are 13 and 12. The Sycamores 25 and nothing. And let us meet both teams. Let's go to the public address announcer. <laughs> it's Bill Edwards. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing lineups for today's game. First, the Shockers of Wichita State University. Number 11, a guard, a 6'1 junior from New York City, Ronnie Ryer. At the other guard, number 23, a 6'3 senior from Somers, New York, Bob Trogel. Wearing double zero at center, a 6'6 senior from Burnham, Illinois, Steve Kalosinski. Number 44 at forward, a 6'7 junior from Hollywood, Florida, Richard Williams. And, and at the other forward, number 31, a 6'6 senior from New York City, Cheese Johnson. The coach for Wichita State, Gene Smithson. Now let's greet the Sycamores of Indiana State University. Number 22, a guard, a 6'3 junior from Chicago, Illinois, Carl Nix. At the other guard, number 23, a 6'2 and a half sophomore from Warsaw, Indiana, Steve Reed. Number 42, a forward, 6'7 and a half junior from East St. Louis, Illinois, Alex Gilbert. Forward, number 40, a 6'8 junior from Rushville, Indiana, Brad Miley. Number 33, the center, a 6'9 senior from Princeton, Indiana, Larry Bird. And the head coach for the Sycamores, Bill Hodges. As we were last week, so we are this week. We are snowed in in Terre Haute, Indiana. But who cares? We've got a team that thinks it should be number one. I guess the team that thinks it can win, Wichita State and Indiana State. This is going to be a noisy place today. Nobody can hear anything, but they can see Tom Richards is the referee. Ray Sonnenberg is the umpire. Wichita State in the black and gold. They've got gold fever. Host Indiana State in the white. Back to you, 33. That's the man, Larry Bird. Dalosinski. The jump against Gilbert and Bird controls. He's off the call. Next to Kirk. Corner to Williams. They're now loose and the ball is knocked away by Reed. Kept in play by Gilbert. There you saw the passing ability of Larry Bird. Supposed to be the best passing forward in basketball in some time. Bird with the ball now. Williams is on him. They play man to man. Reed number 23. Jim, I believe we're going to see 100 points scored here today. Brad Miley underneath. Nice block by Cutter. Scoring. I wouldn't be surprised to see a combination of over 200 points. 
It's happened before. Wichita State one time this year scored 125 against Drake. He shot first and good for Miley. It is 3-0. Miley, a 56% shooter. In actuality, the Sycamores are not a good free-throwing team. Missed that one. Ball bounces around. Picked up. That is Williams that picked it up. Here's Wire. Very quick. Seldom shoot. Number 11. There's Kalasinski, and he'll be short. Bird goes up for the rebound, has the rebound over to Nick. Nick stops. Gene Smithson wants walking called. The ball is lost and is picked up by Ryan. No place to feed it to, so he takes a rare shot. It's good. Ryan gets it on the board. It's 3 2. Good shot by Ronnie Ryan, but I think he's carrying the ball in his dribble. I wouldn't be surprised to see the ref call palming. Steve Reed, sophomore from Warsaw, Indiana. There's Nick's tough physical man. Feeds off the bird. Bird hasn't got a shot yet. Passes back to Nick. No good. And there's Miley. Five to two. Indiana State searching for number one. Brad Miley scores a lot on garbage. There's Chief Johnson handling the ball for the first time. Feeds over to Williams, but he way short. That rebound is picked up on the bounce by Larry Bird. The question is, which team would be more tense? Indiana State on national television from their home for the first time. Wichita State trying to nail down third spot in the Missouri Valley Conference. Bird doesn't have any points yet. Neither does Chief Johnson. That'll all change before this is over. The ball is bouncing around and picked up by Pogo. Well, Larry got a little fancy that time. An overhead pass. Dean Johnson, his first shot. Averaging 23 points a game. You notice that hang time on Chief Johnson. He doesn't jump that high, but he can change the, um, his arms and his body in, in, in midair, changing the ball from hand to hand. Five to four to score. Three running things. Larry Bird wouldn't find him. Bird hasn't gotten off the shot yet. Johnson is one for one. Say it over Bird's head. And that's picked up by Chief Johnson. Ball is knocked away by Nick. It'll be a silver. There it is. 7-4. That's a super dunk shot by Carl Nix. He's very quick. He has pro potential. He's missed the outside of this team. Intercepted by Bird. Starts the fast break. No. <laughs> Six of the nine points. Williams, Galicinski looking for position underneath. Walking is called against John Williams. And Steve Smithson says time out. Tommy Wilson gives it to him. 1646 to go. Indiana State has broken on top and lead by five. Nine to four. Plus the San Jose Flats motorcycle race later today on NBC. Once this game is over, remember sports ball to follow. Gymnastics from Romania. A motorcycle racing out in San Jose. Indiana State ball in. There is Larry Bird. Has a couple of rebounds. Has turned the ball over once. Stolen the ball once. Has one assist, but I haven't taken a shot yet. They'll be coming a little wild, Jim. Wichita started out with a light man to man press. Highly on a great feed from Nick. No, no that doesn't count. It doesn't count. Walking is called. He obviously took two steps. Ryan Maley, he'll take two small steps here. I'm not going to call them Chinese steps anymore because the people got offended when I did that last <laughs> Ryer. Get the ball into Cheese Johnson. Up he goes. It's no good. Might have got the rebound. Wichita State lost to Wichita State by 10. I'll repeat again. Cheese Johnson did not play in that game. But Stan Shirley had a great game with 27 points. Driving. And that's going to be blocking cards against Fogel. That's the second team foul against Wichita State. Indiana State okay. has none. You, um, watch uh, Carl Nix. He fakes to the right, drives to the left. Bob Fogel stepped in with his leg, and it was a, um, a blocking foul. Ball is fed past Larry Bird. He didn't even see it coming. Tried to be kept in by Miley. Went off his chest. And now Kalasinski throws the ball right by John Williams. So it's Indiana State's ball again. 
Al and I thought they would be a little tight here at the beginning, perhaps a little, as you might expression, sloppy at the beginning, and that's what we're seeing. I thought it'd be sloppy because of all the build-up for the game that usually happens with college kids. Bird feeds across to Miley. Miley behind him to Nix and takes a shot. Eight points for Carl Nix. And that's what they told us. Wichita State said, we know Bird's going to get his 30-plus. It's Nix that can kill us. Yeah, they, want, they wanted to try to cut Nix off, but he's the son of a preacher in Chicago, and he's off to off good. Green. Make that quote, we'll make it hard. And it's 11 to 6. Still a lot of time to go. Five minutes haven't even gone high yet. Nix is shooting from everywhere. And Kalasinski goes up and gets the rebound over his partner, Richard Williams. Fire behind his back. Well shot by Kalasinski, who can hit from out there and does. Kalasinski has his first defense. It's 11-8. Wichita State is gone within three. And now Indiana State begins to slow it down just a little bit. And they bring the ball up court. They were very patient. So what? Bird threw the ball away. Here's a snowbird for G. Johnson coming up. And all of a sudden, it is close. Johnson has four points. It's 11-10. Wichita State in black. Indiana State in white. Another feed by Bird. That's intercepted by G. Johnson. Richard Williams is doing a good job on covering um, Larry Bird. He's most... Flyer! Flyer the flyer. He gets hot from the outside. Indiana State's in trouble. And Wichita State now has the lead for the first time. 12-11. Bird has had two passes, the last two times down for it, intercepted. Gilbert with the ball, now Miley outside, underneath to Gilbert. You know what happened that time, Jim, the double team and Larry underneath, and uh, Gilbert just cut off and was free on the left-hand side for an easy layup. Beautiful pass. Janosinski on a nice feed. Vogel tries to go up, battles with it, ball taken away. Indiana State. Everybody in Indiana State seems to know their role. They pride themselves on being a team, and that's the first shot taken by Bird, and he's fouled by Richard Williams. And very quickly comes Ray Shirley, who had 27 points in that first game between... He's a good play here with Larry Bird. He's going up in the air. He knows he doesn't have the shot, but he lets it go anyway. Watch him. Picks up the two-shot foul. See that? There's no chance of making it, but the ref is, is blowing the whistle. He makes a two-shot foul instead of a one. And misses. Larry Bird has missed. There's an 84% free throw three of shooter. Lawrence Howell comes in. Wire comes out. And we told you that Ray Shirley has come in. Now the first substitution for Indiana State as Leroy Staley comes in. And Gilbert comes out. This Leroy Staley is a good ball player. He used to start, now he's the first sub. He lost 32 pounds this summer. Bird trying for his first point and half. It's 14-12. Indiana State undefeated. More first place votes in both UPI and AP than any other team, but they've been rated no higher than second. They want to be first and figure they will be if they win today. Shirley gets the ball over to Williams who takes the shot. And look at Larry Bird go up for the rebound. Nice position. The big thing they got to do with Larry Bird is box him off the basket. Off the backboard. They can't let him get in close. Bird is fourth in the nation in rebounding. Second in the nation in scoring. Takes that fall away shot. No good. Jump ball. It'll be between Howell, who went up very high, who just came into the game, and Staley of Indiana State, who also just came into the game. Staley, the taller man. Hit up. Larry Bird. Over. That's a beautiful play by Brad Miley. He tapped the ball over to him. I must call. The tissue paper is on the court again. And right in that area, Al, we saw a lot of water coming through the roof this morning, through the vents up there. They had to get student volunteers to go out and do <laughs> carpet all over the roof. Well, here you see the tap, uh, the pass. Here, nice tap pass there from Brad Maley. That was, that was the reason for the basket. Larry was in perfect position for an easy two. Logo. Bob Heaton is also in. Shot from outside by Howell, no good. Picked up by Chief Johnson. Heat is number 30 for Indiana State. Good shot. That's Richard Williams. His first two points. Their scoring is balanced, and it's 
Eaton, number 30, is the man who took the 50-footer to tie the game with New Mexico State and sent it into overtime, and Indiana State won it. Larry Bird off the backboard. Getting into gear now with five points since 1814. Well, well 20 to go. They're starting to pick underneath, and both taking low pivot positions, and they're swinging for each other. Brad Miley swinging for Larry Bird. Williams, rebound is taken by Miley. Alasinski is getting ready to come back in for Wichita State. Miley told his coach to June, he says, Coach, I don't care how much they offer me, I'm going to come back next year. <laughs> well, Nick throws the ball by Bob Eaton. He doesn't care what the offer is, he's coming back. Time has been called. 12 3 to go, and Indiana State caught at one juncture now has a four-point lead over of the Remember, next Saturday and Sunday, we have the Bay Hill... Citrus Open coming your way with a $250,000 purse. Boy, they've been spreading around the winner's money this year, haven't they? That'll be Saturday and Sunday. And here's the other game that is going on in some parts of our country today. Kentucky out in front of South Carolina by seven. And remember, after our basketball is over today, you have Sports World. And after our basketball is over today for the second week in a row, Alan and I are stay right where we are. It's snowing outside, folks. The airports are closed. And here we go again. Where would I rather be than in Terre Haute, Indiana? Three to go. Kobar has now come in for Wichita State number 10. That is Howell with the ball, 33. There's Jeeves Johnson trying to get around Miley. Take the shot. He does. It is no good. Ball is tipped up and in, and I believe it goes to 25 Shirley. 18-16. That was a good game going here. Well, Nix almost walked with the ball. Larry Bird from the corner, off the front of the rim. Whistle blows, and who's pushing off? John. Number 10, that is Crowbar, and that is the 14 foul. Indiana State has not a foul called yet. There's Bill Hodges, took over from Bob King last October because of the athletic director at that time, head coach's illness. That is very tough. Look at him gang up on it, but mighty as we come in. 20 to 16, and a foul. Here's a pass in a Miley. Watch Bird get inside position there in case the shot is missed. They're overplaying Larry in there, and they're also sneaking in on the baseline. Cheese Johnson picked up the foul. Miley is one for two from the line with a total of five points. That's for a first three-point play. 20 to 16, Indiana State. And you get it, and it surely went way up and went out of off the hands of Larry Bird. How well disciplined Indiana State is. Brad Miley will not take a shot more than eight feet from basket. Now with the basketball. Look at Johnson with that double hump, and look at Bird get the rebound. A couple of all Americans. Great moves by Chief Johnson that time. Larry Bird, there's Mighty outside, and there's Nix. He's been deadly, but not this time. Look at the pass from Bird at the rebound. Whistle underneath. No basket. Tom Richards, the referee, calls it on number 25. That is Shirley. Watch this tip here. It's an unbelievable tip, and watch the pass there. What happened with Larry Bird, speaking to him earlier, I asked, what's the first thing he looks for when he goes in the air? He said, I first look to pass, then I look to shoot after that. Very unselfish player and unselfish in his attitude as he talks. Well, Coach Gene Smithson, the, the, the way he's playing the uh, coach in this game today, he he's going to allow Larry to have his 25, 30 points. He wants to stop everybody else. That's why they're overplaying Carl Nix, but Nix has got out of the gate real fast. Bird from the corner. <laughs> Seven points. Is he the best collegiate player in the country? Many people say he certainly is. Well, he certainly is smooth. He never gets flustered. That's Kobar over the corner. Back in and Wire is up and will come back in. They're the starting guard. Dom on the rebound. He had good position. I don't know why he did it. He's a transfer from Denver. He didn't stay at Denver because he said the school didn't have that much interest in their basketball program. Folks out in Mile High City, happy to hear you say that. Well, that's what he told me. Jump ball. Richard Williams didn't get rid of the ball quick enough. Five seconds, still jumping. 
Williams looks at uh, Gilbert, his counterpart, and put his hands to his head like he's going to shoot himself. You know, surprising thing about Indiana State, they have three junior college, two major college transfers, and two high school recruits. That makes up their starting seven. Quick beat into Bird, who stops and shoots over Williams. In and out, and Kalaszewski is there for the rebound. No facial expression on Larry Bird at all, no matter what the ball goes in or goes out. Jeez Johnson trying to get by and does it a count. That was a foul. Watch here, Bird tries to turn around, help on Cheese Johnson. He doesn't get there in time. Cheese goes up and does his usual Jack Knight moves and automatic two points, maybe a three-point play. Staley draws the foul that is now 22-18, and Cheese Johnson, who is six points off from the floor, has a chance for a three-point play. He's averaged 25 points per ball game the last six ball games he's played in and drops it through. Bob McGuire will tell you shooting foul shots is nothing more than concentration. A little bit of talent. <laughs> Intercepted. There's Krogo. We've got two on one. Heaton covering up, but Krogo lays it in. And Krogo is going to be called with a charging foul. And it does count. Krogo draws his foul, and that's his seventh foul. Uh, it was a nice play watch. He keeps his head up. Reed holds his ground there. He's called for the charge, but he released the ball first. So the basket counts, and it goes down the other end, the one to one, because they're on the seventh uh, foul. And they're in it real early. There's 9.20 left to go to this half. So uh, Wichita State's going to have a problem there. Indiana State only has two team fouls. At the line is Steve Reed, a sophomore out of Warsaw. Leads the team in assists. Does not shoot too much. In one situation. Larry Bird with seven points. Is one for two from the line. 25 from one. What Larry wants to do is get to the NCAA tournament. That's his dream. I think his dream is going to come through. Yep, and he, he turned down an awful lot of money and an awful lot of prestige. He, he made a move to stay on at Indiana State after being drafted number six by the Boston Celtics. Um, I've heard that the Red Auerbach's been down here a few times this year. I watched them play. I don't blame him. <laughs> he, better, well, pointing, he, he better rent a room down here. <laughs> they're pointing at Alex Gilbert for that foul. Snowing outside, Indianapolis Airport, which is about an hour away, has already been closed in. And for that reason, you may see some empty seats here, but make no mistake about it, it is a sellout. It's just that a lot of people, a lot of them are coming from Gene Smith's hometown of Paris, Illinois. Others are coming from Brunswick, Indiana. Some of them may not have been able to get here. Williams had a little trouble with his hands there, but holds on to it. Vogel off the front, and he mildly saved it just from going out. Um, off a pass from out from the baseline, Indiana State went into a 2 3 zone then. Wichita State staying in that man for man. Fogel is the best defensive man. Reed, one of his rare shots. One of his rare shots. He only averages four and a half points a game. Now has three. Indiana State leads by seven. But he sacrifices himself for the team. In high school, he averages 27 points a game. Geez, Johnson knocks it through. That was all net that time. Nine points for Cheese Johnson. If you're keeping score, nine points for Larry Bird. 28-23. Underneath. Ball is thrown away. Cheese Johnson one on one feeds off the hands of Krogel, and Williams keeps it in. Fine play by Williams. Kalasinski will be short. Larry Bird will get the rebound and start the pass break. Wire covers up on Nick. Has the ball knocked away from him. And they're going to call a foul on Wire. Who doesn't think so? Nor does his coach. Ronnie Wire did a nice job defensively there. It looked like he sticked his hand, and I had the wrong angle for whether it was a foul or not. Uh, uh, Bird in the middle kicks it and kicks it out. Now here comes Paul Nix. Nice defense by Ryer. And he put his hand in the quarter's wrist. And a good call by the official. Larry Bird is coming out. He has six rebounds and nine points. That is Carl Nix has a total of ten points. And is at the line for the first time. One and one, remember. This has been hurting Wichita State throughout this first half. And we still have nearly eight minutes to go. What they did with Paul Nix in his freshman year, he wasn't getting any playing time. So they turned around, they told him down to a junior college for a year, which he did, and he averaged 22 points a game. And he came back this year, and he ends up being the starter and uh, really being the uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Outside. Something like Glenn Davis years ago at West Point, Mr. Outside, Mr. Inside with Blanchard. That was football. <laughs> Gee, Johnson ball is out of the way. Fast break started, and there's Nick. Oh. Good try by Kalnick. 
Bridges underneath. He's Johnson. No good. Heaton gets the rebound. Man, one of the walking call there. 7-10. They're getting Shirley up to come back into Wichita State. Next is free for the shot. 13 points, Carl Nix. Eight-point lead, seven minutes to go. Shirley coming in, time is out. 7.01 to go, Wichita State and Indiana State, and the Sycamores lead by eight. Indiana State number one, but he also picks Notre Dame to win the NCAA, and next Sunday, Notre Dame will be on display for most of you against Michigan. Some of you will see Marquette, your old team out, against University of Nevada at Las Vegas. Marquette uh, dropped a tough one last night. Congratulations to Ray Meyer. They lost by a point to uh, DePaul at Chicago, so... Uh, uh, tournament time's coming, and I think the Paul and Marquette and Notre Dame, all independents, are uh, looking forward to being invited. I watched your face as they told you what happened in the hotel lobby this morning. <laughs> it wasn't very nice. Feet in underneath, almost gets away from Ryer. Larry Bird is getting ready to come back in. That is Shirley, double teamed over there. That's Gilbert again, and if it is, that's his third. That's what it is. Richard Williams get the ball. He'll go up. He'll double pump on it. Keeps his head up there. Lays it up nice. Good hanging time. The ball doesn't go in. He'll end up with a two-shot foul. And from now on, both teams are in a one-on-one -on -one after this. Bob Heaton checks in. Good. Now the three-person foul comes out. Richard Williams at the line for the first time. Drops it through. He's a 66% foul shooter. Kids call him. Kids call him Yogi. Get the Yogi Bear. Ten point difference now. Wichita State, half-hearted press. Downing Reed across court. He is across court at plenty of time. Nick Fraley wants to shoot the ball, and that goes right off the hand on the pass of Keith Johnson and out of bounds. Um, if they have a fault in Indiana State, which is a beautiful fault, Jim, they overpass. They're constantly looking to, uh, to hit one of their teammates, which is uh, a nice concept, but I just think they do too much of it. They try to force that ball underneath. Well, Bill Hodge just told us if we do have a complaint from anybody, they say we just passed too many times. There's Bird. Oh, wow, he's in gear now. That's 13 points. And a 12-point lead again. Ball knocked up by Reed away from Howell. He's a thorn in their side. The guard play with the State. Oh, look at Bird! Oh. The thing on that, Jim, was the way Bird handled that pass. That was not a good pass. He reached up with his right hand and brought it down. Watch this pass from Paul Nix coming down. It's not a good pass. It's too fancy. He reached up and controlled the ball, comes in the back door, loses his balance a little bit, and kicks it up with a backward spin with his left hand. Surely draws a foul. There from the other side, what a beautiful catch of the pass. Kicks it up backwards, picks up a two-shot foul, made his first. After missing his first bird, is now hit on four straight from the foul line. And has a total of 14 points. This can make it 15 after a very slow start. 39-25, a 14-point difference. Indiana State is saying, hello there, posters. Are you watching us? <laughs> Larry Bird doesn't care if he scores. It's just a beautiful ball play. Gee, Johnson was posted high there, but misses the shot. And it goes out of bounds into a jump ball. Four oh two to go. Gene Smithson of Wichita State is understandably upset. His team is having trouble. They've fallen behind by 14 points with four minutes and two seconds to go. First half. Fire and the Indiana State University student body reminding you that sports world is coming up next. The Romanian Gymnastics Championships. Under our know will be there. It's a women's championship. Amelia Everly, have you heard of her? Outstanding, 14 years old, and also motorcycle racing. Next week, Marquette and the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, one of our games, and most of you will see Notre Dame and Michigan. Jump ball. Indiana State has outscored Wichita State 13 to 4 in the last four minutes. All belongs to Wichita State. You say Indiana State stepped into the circle too soon. Trogel will throw it in. Trogel comes from Germany. He came here when he was eight years old, speaking not a word of English, and now he's playing a very American game invented up at Springfield, Massachusetts. Basketball. And his father's the New York cop. Oh, you like that. There's Shirley from outside. In and out. Tough luck there for Shirley. Trogel follows and puts it in. 
That's six points for Bob Kogel. 39-27. Reed having an outstanding game, bringing the ball up court. Here's Nix with all those points he's got. 13 up. Smiley. And Larry Bird, double team ball, knocked away out of bounds by Pete Johnson. Everybody wants a foul. No, I don't think it's a foul that time. It's an excellent call by Ray Sonnenberg underneath the basket. Larry Bird and... I tell you, Shirley said, look, I just had my arm up. What's going on here? That's foul number three for Ray Shirley, who had that outstanding game with 27 points in their first meeting. Well, obviously, that was when Cheese Johnson didn't play. Cheese had a sprained ankle. Uh, Shirley's nickname is Bones. You can tell by his build where he got it from. One and one for Birds. That's six in a row from the foul line, and that's 16 points for Larry Bird. Kalosinski comes in, and Shirley will come out for Wichita State. Well, there's the man that you've seen on the magazine covers of not only sporting publications, but also news publications across America. Number one draft choice, six men followed up, and it's in and out. The shot taken by Staley, no good. The six man picked last year when he had a year to go by the Boston Celtics. Al has already told you that. Celtics have until June 24th to sign it. Kalosinski gets a shot off, in and out. Kalosinski, hustling, follows it, and banks it in. Kalosinski's a hard player. He stays with the game all the way through. And speaking to him yesterday, he says, I'm 100% Polish. Three minutes, five seconds to go. Sycamores of Indiana State up by 11, playing at home. They'll play at home here on Tuesday night. Larry Bird, ball knocked away, and Richard Williams says, me? That's his third personal foul. was described as very calm and can leave the game here. There's Bill Hodges. He's not being so calm today. Someone asked how Bill Hodges handles the press after a game. They said beautifully. He's never lost in his head coaching career. <laughs> He's terrific. There's only one other coach that that happened to was Lou Lucini. He came on to Columbia University years ago and they went through the season 22-0. and And their first game in the NCAA, they lost to Illinois. Eric Kuhn has come in, number 45. By the way, did you know that John Wooden coached here at Indiana State for two years? Last year, including tournament, he was 27 and 7. 17 points, Larry Bird, first half. Coach Wooden went right from here to UCLA. Whistle blows again, and they've called time again. 2.57 to go. Well, we have... A sports world coming up, and it's a great show for you today. Immediately following our basketball, and let's take a quick look at what they've got to offer today. Dean Smithson talking to his Wichita State team, which at the moment, and there's a lot of time left, is being blown out. They trail by 13 with 2.57 to go. They've got to slow it down a little bit, as you said, Al, and get some organization going and play patiently. There's a lot of time left. I don't think their fast break is completely under control. Uh, the new coach hasn't had enough time to put in the system. He hasn't recruited his own ball players. But um, any team with Cheese Johnson is capable of uh, turning on at any moment. Uh, I think they should be coming out soon with a hard man-to-man -man press against Indiana State. Ryer is back in. Fogel is in. And there's the man on the far side, Kuhn, who just came in. He is a freshman out of Wichita, and he's got two points. Well, here's that press I was talking about, but I don't think it's uh, tenacious enough. They seem to be just token. No, no, they're a little more tenacious now. Let's see if they turn it over. Eric Kuhn can say, my first shot I ever took against Indiana State on national television, I made it. There's a hook by Heaton, no good, and this will be picked up by Ryan. Let's see if he slows it down and gets a little patient now. He will, with 2.15 to go. Feed in, there's Cheese Johnson. And it's good, and it's a foul. That's a hairline foul. Uh, this cheese gets the ball, Larry's in back from kind of holds his ground. He might have stomached him. It looks like he might have just hipped him a little bit as he went up in the air. Uh, if you get the ball in the cheese, Johnson, you can stay in any college basketball game. Johnson. Hits it, three-point play. That's his second three-point play. It's 42-34, down by eight now. They're back in the ball game. At halftime of the Kentucky-South Carolina game, or other televised game, Kentucky at the half, up by five, 
Eaton to Miley. Bird's loose on this side of the basket. Nobody near him. But Dixon's going to take a shot from way outside. It is no good. Picked up. Wrestled away from Bird. And the man, impetus, Kalasinski just takes him out of bounds. Reed will come in, and Staley will go out. Ball gets down low. Kalasinski's a very hard-nosed basketball player. He carried the ball out with him. He wrestled away from Larry Bird. Bird almost lost that ball out of bounds. Now takes a shot. Oh, my. Oh, my. There's one in your face. <laughs> wow. It seems that the further out he is, the, uh, the more uh, high percentage he puts the ball in. 20 points for Larry Bird, first half. Kogel tries to get it into Kalasinski, who drops it in. Kalasinski just does not give up. That's six points. Still an eight-point deficit. Wichita State is in his ball game. Kalasinski's changed his number to double zero because he's a reborn Christian and he wanted everything changed at the we're seeing senior year. That shot of Bird was partially blocked. Now Heaton goes up, but I may be fouled by T. Johnson. Here's where, here's where you catch Larry Bird. Watch him put the ball in the face there, take it in the face, then now watch him shoot it. Unbelievable. You know how far away that is? That's in left field. <laughs> It's one and one, remember. T. Johnson has picked up his second foul. This is Eaton. Bob Eaton has his first point. They really should take Cheese Johnson out now. There's a minute and 16 seconds left. Rather than take a chance on picking up his third foul. Foul is the type of pick you up in the first half if you only got two fouls. I would normally. I, I, I'd take Look that at in. that move by Cheese Johnson and the score. I believe after a ball play, he gets four fouls. He knows it, and he changes his style of play. So I never uh, save the ball player after four fouls. I save him the first half after two, the second half after three. Four points. Watch Cheese Johnson's move down. He comes up, he hangs a minute, he just pumps it up off the backboard. He almost plays all the shots off the glass, which is rare. I think that is on Keith Johnson again. That's his third. That's why you would have taken him out. Uh, yeah, I think it was a tactical error there. Kalasinski. All right, 50 seconds to go. 46-38. Did they play for one shot? Now with Keith Johnson, he goes a little far. Picked up as he dropped the ball. They've got two on one. Reed loses the ball out of bounds. 38 seconds to go. Taking cheese out now, Jim. I really thought they should have taken him out with 116. There's 38 seconds left. The score is 46 to 38. Eight points spread. I think they might, they're going to play for one shot. Look to go in with a six points down or eight points down. They don't want to go in double digits down. Uh-oh. Wire almost on that ball. I noticed that early in the game. Kogel is free and puts it in. That's eight points for Bob Kogel. 20 seconds to go, and now a six-point lead. It was a big lead of 12 points. They've cut that in half. Reed's having quite a game. He's that ball. Bird goes up and puts it in. Get out your calculators, men. They better put this oh. up. Got to put it up. He does and what scores. A, oh, what a With nice second to go. Trogo puts it in. What a nice play by Trogo behind his back dribble. How about that? It's only a six-point ball. At one time, it was 12 points. At the half, Indiana State driving for what they hope to be number one. Wichita State driving for sole place of third place. In the Missouri Valley Conference, it's 48-42, Indiana State. The Soviets say, came, saw, and conquered Louisville 91 to 76. And they are, according to Al McGuire, our favorites for the gold medal in the 1980 Olympic Games. That's part of our college basketball report, which is coming up in a moment. But now let's pause for these messages. Hello again from Indiana State and Terre Haute. I'm Jim Simpson with Al McGuire. We told you it's snowing outside. Or did we say that last week? I think we said it last week. Snowing so much that Dave Gabbett, who was the Olympic coach for 1980, couldn't make it. He got as far as Chicago. And that's the end of the line. We're going to talk about Dave Gabbett and the Olympics in a moment. But this is Indiana State. You say they should be rated number one. They feel they are number one. And nearly everybody says that Larry Bird is the best college player in the country today. We've watched a half. What do you think, Al McGuire? Um, I think that Larry Bird is the best ball player in the country. What I can see, I haven't seen them all. 
what he does, he spreads throughout the whole team. A player that has this type of uh, charisma, the whole team is a part of Larry Bird. He's an unselfish person. He passes well, so the whole team's unselfish, and the whole team passes. He has the whole package. He can shoot. He uh, can post up from the outside. Uh, and his court sense is so important. So I, I think that, um, that they'll go deep into the NCAA. I don't know if they'll get to the Final Four because their bench is questionable. Injuries have to stay away, and the last shot got to go in. I personally think they're a little bit sloppy because they're trying to impress the national audience at the present time. You know what got me was the play of Steve Reed. I did not see, expect to see that kind of play, but we're going to talk about that later. Dave Gabbard of Providence College, Dave Gabbard of the U.S. Olympic team, was to be here. As we said, he's snowed in in Chicago. We're going to be snowed in here tonight. But what about the Olympic team? What is it going to take for us to win in 1980? Al mcguire has got some ideas of his own, but let's look at some other coaches around the country, including Dave Gavin. As a member of the United States Olympic Basketball Committee for the last time around, I guess I felt we did a pretty good job with that one. I think that uh, we had good input from the coaches. That was the big difference. So I think that if we can get coaches' input again and have the head coach and his staff have great input, although not have to have the sole responsibility for, for selection, I think that we'd be doing a, a wise thing. I think our selection committee and picking Olympic team must go by the mandate of the coach. He might say, I need a defensive player, I need a big man to play defense, I need a pure shooter, I want an unselfish uh, individual offensively, and you know, you have to really pick 11th and 12th man too. And it's hard to find 11th and 12th man that will be happy being that. They're all all-stars that come to the tryouts, but uh, fortunately, we, the selection committee did find a, uh, some that would do that in 76, and I hope we can in 1980. Well, I think Dean Smith had an excellent idea. Uh, he won it in the course, and then they, he brought some of his own ball players along, and he was a little bit criticized for that. And by, he always criticized by somebody. But anyway, his idea, I think, was to have fun. If the team that wins the NCAA, should the five men or the six men should represent it, they should pick up about five or six others. I think the, the whoever wins the national championship uh, in 1980 should, you know, have six or seven of their players on the ball club and let that coach coach a team and pick up six or seven that he think would fit in with his uh, system of play and philosophy. And I think you have a pretty good basketball team. Abe, Moscow, 1980. What does the United States have to do to come back with the gold medal? Well, I went to uh, Munich and I watched uh, the fights and the basketball games. Those are my two favorites. And as you know, they have officials from everywhere, referees. And any time you had two communistic officials, our fighter would have to kill the guy. And even then, they'd disqualify our guy. So I think that's going to be the big problem in officiating. If you don't get some officials from the free country, so to speak, and even then, you've got to cross that border after you call the game, I think that's going to be the big key. Personally, I feel that in 1980, the basketball Olympics in Moscow will be a very difficult task for the United States. Obviously, now with the Russians being over here twice during our regular season, uh, experimenting with certain players and seeing how far they can go, they will be ready for 1980. I think Yugoslavia will be very, very difficult to beat 1980 over there in Moscow. But I feel that we should now start a program, uh, not for our superstars that may be going professional in a year or two, but some of the younger high school sophomores, juniors, and seniors who now will become our 1980 Olympic team. And if we had a summer training program where they were going abroad for two weeks and getting in a position where they could prepare for any type of flow, that could give them the competition that we're looking for. I think this is one way we can get ready for 1980. I think to bring them together for two or three weeks, even though we did it in Montreal, even though we've done it before, uh, I don't think we can look in the history and say, well, we are that good. I think now we have to realize that Europe is getting better and we have to make some adjustments so that we will be competitive and bring back the gold medal in 1980 for basketball in the Olympics in Moscow. I'm in favor of a school being allowed to play a foreign tour every two years, for example, instead of four as it now stands, because I think that uh, it's a great educational experience for the young men uh, to go abroad. And I also think in terms of our Olympic preparation, the more we can play international rules against tough competition in other countries, it's going to be to our advantage in the Olympiad year. Only one time in the history has the United States not won the Olympic gold medal. That was in 1972 in Munich. This man here does not predict that we will win. We will come back in just a moment to find out what Al mcguire has got to add to what all of these other coaches have said about what we must do to win in 1980. What did Dave have to say? Well, first of all, Dave used to play ball for me when I was a freshman coach at Dartmouth College. What he said is that um, 
They're going to have the Pan Am Games uh, trials at uh, Bloomington, Indiana this year. They're going to invite about 72 of the college ball players there. Uh, the selection committee is headed by Dean Smith, along with Bobby Knight and himself. And this will get into a little bit of the summer thing we've been talking about, where the team can get together and at least start to prepare for the Olympics. The only problem he said they, they have in Russia at the present time is that they will not allow a second assistant in basketball. They will not give them the credentials. Outside of that, everything else is on track. And I still say at the present time that, that Russia is in the driver's seat. Well, that's our Pro Kids basketball report. And the way it looks, if you listen to these folks, we're going to have a tough time in 1980. The race for the 19 is being brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer who invite you to see and test drive the all-new LTD and Mustang now. By Pabst Blue Ribbon. Pabst is proved to be the best, naturally, with no artificial ingredients, and you can taste it. By Texaco, who also brings you quality automotive products you can trust. And by Avis, the We Try Harder car rental company. The state, the first half statistics is summarized by Al. Well, they're both shooting the same percentage from the field, 51% with sex in the shooting. The difference in the score is the amount of foul shots made, where even though Wichita State shooting 100%, the other team has made eight more foul shots. Bird is obviously leading with 22 points and one personal foul with Nicks with uh, 13 points. Johnson's 14 and Trogo surprisingly has 10 points. The big problem here is the foul situation. Three to three of the ball players have three fouls on them on Wichita State. Johnson, Williams, and Shirley. Galazinski jumping against Gilbert and it's controlled by Cheese Johnson. At one time it was 39-25 Indiana State. Over the last few minutes of the first half, Wichita State outscored him 17 to 9. Kalasinski shot goes in and out, and that is knocked out of bounds, and they thought it was by Gilbert, but they award the ball to Indiana State. Now Nix throws it into Bird. Nix is 22, Bird is 33, Gilbert 42, Miley 40, and Steve Reed 23. Fogel 23, Williams 44, Chief Johnson from outside, shot taken by Nix, Williams 44 has it. Kalasinski's double O. Paul Nix's trajectory was real low that time. Ryer bounce pass. Kalasinski has to fade to pass the ball up, and that's a good play. Jim Johnson now has 16 points. And all of a sudden, it is a four-point ball game with almost the full second half to go. You get the ball and load of cheese, Johnson, and he'll keep Wichita State in any basketball game. Reed, who had an outstanding first half, stealing the ball, running the club from backcourt. There's Gilbert. There's Reed. He took some shots, feeds it underneath to Miley. He stuffs the ball against the underside of the basket, feeds it off to Bird. Back to Gilbert for the shot. No good, and Williams has the rebound. Wire did a nice job turning away from Seth Roy. Look at that. Goes heading him up. Hopped it in up. Four goals at it. Dean Smithson is furious right in front of us. Yeah, it was a close call. Reed underneath Gilbert. They lost their concentration. Bird goes up. 24 points Bird. Had a chance there to tie it. And couldn't do it. They thought they had got it. Feed into Trogel, who puts it in. Yes, sir. Trogel has 12 points. And again. 50-46. Game's a little sloppy at the present time. They've got to get back into their continuity. Ball is thrown out of bounds by Reed. And Nix is saying, hey, I was going that way. Reed put behind him, and now they have a consultation in the middle of the floor. And Bill Hodges sits down, the coach of Indiana State. No one came out to help see Reed that time. Williams pumps, knocked oh, away <laughs> by Gilbert. Ball is off next, but he controls it. Super J means super jump. Nix forces the ball inside, and the foul is on whom? Big question here because Williams has got three already. It's on Kalasinski. That is his second. Early in the first half, Wichita State was in deep foul trouble. They committed seven personal fouls in a hurry, and Indiana State was able to rack up a lot of one-and-ones. Foul Nix. Puts it off the knee of Kalasinski, not about. Carl Nix is a real hard-nosed ball player. He constantly puts out 100%. Oh, look at that pass into Bird. And Bird now has... Caught them sleeping. Also, Wichita is playing a man-to-man, -man, which is a no-no. From out of bounds underneath. Kalasinski shooting over Bird and dropping it in. Don't get up, please, Kalasinski. 
the senior from Burnham, Illinois. He's been tough when the going has been tough. Bird takes the shot way long and taken down by Chief Johnson. Here's Kogel, stops, takes the shot. In and out, Bird is all the way back down court to get the rebound and dribbles behind his back. Ten rebounds for Bird when his career has averaged 13. He's averaged 30 points a game in his career. Well, he's a, he plays a thinking game. He's always in perfect position for rebounds and layups. And he's going to take the shot from outside. It is no good. And Bird's got the rebound. That's 11. All goes out of bounds off the hands of Keith Johnson. Johnny Raya did take a bad shot that time. He had two men free underneath. He should have pulled up and pulled the defensive man out on him. Second half, 46-38. Kentucky leads South Carolina. Our score, 52-48. 16-40 to go. Indiana State on national television from home for the first time. Nick. Kalashinsky, almost throws it away. They got three on one again. Krogel, no good. Batted back. Krogel follows and scores. 14 points for Krogel, 52 to 50. Wichita State plunge right back into the ball game. Don't, don't forget this. Krogel's also covering Paul Nixon on the other end, so he's playing both ends of the court. There's Reed. Time is called and called by Bill Hodges of the Sycamores of Indiana State. Good timeout. 16-14 to go. It was a six-point difference, as you can see. After we decide this, Sports World is next. And remember, we're on the Sports World show, Romanian national championships in Bucharest, including Amelia Everly, a young 14-year-old that they say will replace Nadia Komenich. Reed with the basketball. Smiling. There is Reed. Al Nix in the corner. We will be picking. There is... Nix taking a shot, doesn't go down. Ball goes out of bounds and belongs to Wichita State. Started to say, we'll be picking the MVP of this game. $1,000 for that player's school from Gillette and a letter for him. And right now, Wichita State, trailing by 14 in the first half, could tie it here in the second half. Chief Johnson does not get the shot away. Kalasinski surely gets the shot away, way short, and look who's there. Bird, and boy, an elbow goes right in Kroger's face. Gilbert has to score it up. Nobody else is down. All five state players were down, but only Gilbert from Indiana State. They're going to start posting up Larry Bird. Reed, oh, no. That's only six points for him, but he's played an outstanding game. 54-50. When Bradley put two men on the Larry Bird, Reed's got 19 points. Blocking called against Reed. That is his first personal foul. Here is Wire trying to go by, and you will see Reed still moving. He did not have position and draws the blocking foul. Good call. Well, there's the ball in and out by Kalashinsky, and guess who got the rebound? With 14, Larry Bird. And the Sycamores can go up by six now. They cut it to two, Wichita State. Larry Bird pumps, fakes. No good, no foul call, foul call underneath. And it's going to be caught, I believe, on Gilbert. Off from 33, Bird. That'll be a second. He's, he's faking the pump. He's looking for the foul. He doesn't get it, but now watch how, how he fouls his shot right into the basket, which is a rare talent. Not too many ball players have that, and he does commit the foul. Wire. Kalasinski can't shoot over Bird. It's tough to get inside for Wichita State throughout the entire game. Chief Johnson forces that shot, and there's this. What is that, 15? 15. How many guys 22 years of age got a street named after them in their hometown? French Lick, Indiana is named the Boulevard after Larry Bird. Six-point lead. Ball is going back to court. Along to Indiana State. 14.09 to go. Yeah, there's a three-block stretch of a street near Larry Bird's old high school in French Lake, Indiana, and it's called Larry Bird Boulevard. Three blocks is like two miles in New York. There's only 1,800 people right there. They must have heard it. Called by Dean Smith, and that's 28 points for Bird. 
They had it down to two, and now it's up to eight. Indiana State, fourth inning, 52-50, and have reeled off six straight points. Fourteen minutes to go. Indiana State driving. Here's Larry Bird gets positioned underneath, just there waiting. Very, very patient. Now he'll swing over to the weak side to get the ball with no maximum effort. Then he just turns around and puts up with his right hand off the glass. Well, Once next the weekend, Ariel, next weekend we've got the Bay Hill golf bet, Donald Palmer. Look at that. Dallas Dipsy lost the ball off his own hand. Bay Hill golf next Saturday Sunday here on NBC, and Gene Smithson has to be a little curious. He's had a case on several occasions today of his players not being able to handle a pass. Wichita State got to stop him here. Miley outside. Nix, he had a great early part of the play. Oh my, here comes Larry Bird again. He's going to put it. Nope. Can't get it away. And they did stop him. Keys Johnson with the ball. Keys Johnson, nice feed to Ryer. Puts it in. Six points to Ryer and a six point difference in the game. That's an excellent pass. 13 and a half minutes left. Here's Nix. Ryer tries to knock it away, but Nix takes the shot. Four points in this half, 17 altogether. Again, the eight-point lead. Lots of time left. Rick says that Ricky Green quickness. So he used to play for Michigan State. Dalosinski misses this shot. Heaton has the rebound. Thirteen minutes left. Terre Haute and Indiana State have gone wild. They've been waiting for this day to go undefeated. They win their 26th in a row. Larry Bird from way! Unbelievable outside shooter. Reminds me of Brad Holland from UCLA. 96-9. There's Shirley from outside. No good. Oh, there's a foul ball on Nick there. He is physical. Oh, he really slot. He really leveled Krogel, and the fans don't think he did. Bill Hodges said he's the hardest-nosed player I've ever had, and he's the most intense one I've ever been around. Here he goes up here. Now watch him come in, and he'll swing his elbows here which is illegal and that's where the foul was created outside there's a shot in and out controlled by Kalosinski who misses his first catch the rebound and has it knocked out of bounds Larry Bird sets the standards he sets the criterion for Indiana State zone right now. There's Steve Johnson. No good. Above the rim. All right, Above the rim was Shirley. They call it offensive rebound. Offensive interference. He goes to shot up by Cheese. Now watch Shirley come in right there. It's offensive rebound. His hand got over the rim. That's why the ball was in the cylinder. Ten point difference. 62-52. Indiana State has scored in the first. Oh, here's a long one again. 32 points, Larry Bird. Red Auerbach better live down here the next couple of months. <laughs> Gilbert got carried away, and that's his fourth personal foul. Tobar is getting up to come in for Wichita State. 12 point lead at one time in the first half. Wichita State was down by 14. Wichita State has the knack of coming back into ball games. They're down by 14, got it back to two. Against Bradley when they lost last week, they were down by 16 and got it back to two. Richard Williams comes in front court at 6-7. Shirley also 6-7 goes out. You know, the teams inside the uh, M uh, Missouri Valley are Bradley, Creighton, Drake, Southern Illinois, West Texas State, New Mexico State, and Tulsa. Krogel forces a shot. Whistle oh, underneath. Commissioner of the uh, conference is Mickey Holmes. He's been commissioner for seven years. The nine schools are located in eight different states. Dollars on Brad Miley. That's his first. And there are five team fouls now against Indiana State and only one against Wichita State. Now there's that hand problem I told you that Wichita State's been having. They've lost the ball several times on passes. Now, I'll, let's Long see this call. Two. No, I don't know. Look at that. It was all the way up the end of the court. Uh, Thing, how can it be? I thought.
thought Kobar was down to the ground before he laid the ball on him. 12-point lead. They can make it 14 again. 11 and a half minutes to go. Daly with the basketball. Keaton. Bird is in the low post. Hicks driving. Forces the shot. Bird comes up with it. Puts it up. And it is good. the foul that's the third you know Larry Bird has everything if he lacks something it's foot quickness he comes Paul Nix in he puts it up he gets hung it's blocked Larry gets he doesn't jump that high here Four time he turns around and puts up a, a dying swan left hand hook shot here he comes in isolation on Larry Bird here it is now watch this dying swan hook shot doesn't jump too high four or five inches keeps his eye on the rim bang just made a three-point play, and they're up by 15. 35 points for Larry Bird, and a 15-point lead. That's the biggest lead of the game. At one time, it was 52-50, and since that time, Indiana State has scored 15-2 to two for Wichita State. Now on Miley again. Hold it. Check it. That's number 44, Staley. That's his second. I asked Dick Versace, the coach at Bradley, what he thought of Larry Bird, and he said, one step slow, maybe two. Doesn't jump that well, but he's simply the best basketball player in America because he has a great heart. Malosinski to the line for the first time, and doesn't even barely touch the rim. Lack of concentration. He'll bottom this one out, but... Nope, sure are both of them, but controlled by Kalosinski. He's Johnson... Wow, what a move. Good to get offensive rebounding. The same thing happened again. Uh, this is going to be a real close call. Watch Cheese Johnson put it up for a low trajectory. Bounces in there hard. Kalosinski comes up, and the ref was right. It was offensive interference. 15-point lead, 11 minutes to go. Sports World to follow. Indiana State hoping it's a 30-point lead. They're looking for number one in the nation. Pass off. Daly from the side, no good. Guess who's there? You got it, Larry Bird. 15 rebounds. 15 points in this half, 37 altogether. 69-52, Kroger. There's still a lot of time left, four and a half minutes. Galasinski, back to the 59-54. Steve Kalosinski's playing a tough game out there. He's keeping Wichita State reasonably in the ball game. Larry Bird. Next, he loves to drive. There's Heaton. He's a clutch shooter. Four points for Bob Heaton. 71-54. They call him Cowboy because he wears a cowboy hat around campus all the time. Kalosinski gets it away and pops it through again. Well, around the country, I'm sure you're watching and thinking of teams like UCLA, Notre Dame. There's a charge, I do believe, against Knicks. All of the top rated teams around the country, Duke, North Carolina. That's Knicks' third. What do you think of Indiana State now? Make your own judgment. You're seeing the same thing out at our city. They're tough. When you go on the road and win at New Mexico, win at Bradley, beat the Salukis down in Carbondale, Illinois. They beat Purdue by 10 points. They beat Russia when Russia beat Purdue, Notre Dame, and Indiana in November. This is not a fluke. This is a ball. Vogel, good-looking shot. Vogel has 16 points. 71-58. It's a 13-point lead again, and still nine and a half minutes to go. Steve Reed, Kobar's on hit. Keaton, tough competitor, feeds it into Steve Johnson. All of a sudden, here comes Wichita State again. Don't go away. Cheese, post up underneath this. That's what he's trying to do now, but the shot is taken from outside on the whistle blows. And it may be some little... Nope. 44, that will be Staley. That will be his third personal foul. And time has been called. 9-15 left in the game. Thus far, after being 52-50, Indiana State has turned it on, but it's not to the tournament. One and one. Now it is Indiana State that is in foul trouble. And Shirley drops it through. And he'll get the bonus shot. 9-15 to go. 
You know, Indiana State with the lead doesn't have to be that aggressive, so the one-on-one -on -one is not really that important. They should try to pick, uh, pick up their own fouls now. There's only two on Wichita State. Now, now that's, uh, that's a quick call. It's a good call, I think. Nine minutes to go down in South Carolina. Columbia 61-53, Kentucky, and Kentucky is beginning to peak at the right time of the year. Well, last year they didn't want a conference tournament. This year they're pleased to have one. 71-59. <laughs> Reed is double team. There's Bird loose. Oh my. And he passes. Look at Staley. And he misses the shot. What a pass by Bird. Fast break. Wichita State Wire will hold it up. They can draw within 10 and nine minutes to go. Shirley passes off. And there's Chief Johnson dropping it through. Chief Johnson now has 18 points. 71 61. It was 15 points. Now it's down to 10. Just about every shot he takes is off the glass. by himself. Look out. That's what happens. Look out. Automatic. 39 points by my count. Bingo. Oh, I bet Red Auerbach's sitting up there in Boston going, Whew. <laughs> you know, Larry didn't get out of the gate past this game. The first six, seven minutes he's on the drought. Shirley misses and third of the ball bounced away and stepping on the end line is T. Johnson. Watch him out of position. He's always on the inside. His timing, he almost controlled it. Fell uh, reached over his back and knocked it out of bounds. He's constantly thinking ahead of his moves. Staley with the basketball. As long enough, there's Larry Bird. Whoop, whoops, foul, and it's going to be called against Shirley. Gee, a nice, a four. A nice pass off he kicked it uh, ahead and was fouled that time for Staley. Uh, people that Al and I have seen in restaurants and around the hotel and around this Holman Center are wondering if they win big today, will someone finally vote them number one? They've already gotten more first place votes in both the UPI and AP poll than anybody else, but they've never been number one, and they want to finish the season number one. I think UCLA and Notre Dame have raised the white flag. Look out, there's a better play coming up, 41 points. That's all right, here we go with Larry again. Nice pass into him. He fakes to the right, and he swings right around. Very easy, takes one giant step, plays it high. He did charge into um, Kolosinski. That's his third personal foul, 41 points. He averages in his career, remember, 30 points a game. That's his career. They have, they have to take the one-to-one -one down this end. A little over 10,000 now fills this place up, and they've got... 9,579, and taking into consideration that you're going to hardly move, if at all, outside because of the snow and bad weather. Kalasinski misses. Ball is loose. Battle for it. He's going to pick it up. It's Staley, and it's blocked. And Kruger draws a foul. Looks like a combination of soccer and basketball and football that time. Oh, James Smith is hot. hot. Here he is, he's kicking the ball over. Goes by, goes by him. I can't see who picks it up this time. Oh, that Stacely picks it up, goes up. Trogo comes up and fouls him. And I think that's his fourth foul. I don't know what Coach Gene Simpson was up, Smithson was up about. It was obviously a foul. <laughs> He's up, I'll tell you. Staley has not scored and goes to the line for the first time. Gene Simpson uh, is 39 years of all, all of age. He's 10-year high school coach, four years assistant coach at Illinois State, three years head coach at Illinois State. This is his first year at Wichita State. And he also got his master's degree from Indiana State. And he graduated from North Central in Naperville, Illinois, which is 35 miles below Chicago. <laughs> well, that takes care of that. Okay. 16-point lead, a little bit less than eight minutes to go. Wichita State keeps chipping away and then losing it again. Shirley, top of the key, trying to get Johnson down underneath the big end. Wire, gets it to Kalasinski, he's got no place to go, does he? Ball is taken away by Bird on a steal. He'll take it all away, and it's no good, and the foul is called on Wire. He's just, either going to get the basket or the foul, one of the two. He just ate up Ronnie Raya that time. Um, 
Okay, watch Larry Bird. What else can I say about the belt? He's doing the whole package here. Here he is leading his own fast break. Ronnie Ryers, no, it's a mismatch completely. He had a lot of courage even to stand there. He reaches his hand in, fouls him, obviously, runs it across his face, not on purpose. And he's on the line for two. Well, he's got 41 points already. He's putting on quite a bit of well, I don't think he's sweating. Well, when you and I talked to him this morning, he sat there very calm, talked about the team concept. We asked him if there's pressure on him. He said, not at all. So we just go out, try to win every game, play as well as we can, we know we'll win. 79-61. The only thing he wants money for is buy a new pair of jeans. Oh. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Krogo. He's into the corner. There's Wire for a rare shot by Ronnie Wire, and he now has eight points. 16-point lead. This may be too long, but no, 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 no. That was not done on purpose. Yogi Richards, uh, Richard Williams, uh, bumped him on the way down. That's his fourth personal foul. And Saley goes back to the line. He was two for two. He was just there moments ago. Looks like we're getting close to a bust out here. Plenty of time left, 715 if they make another run. They gotta start putting more pressure on up court, Wichita State. Daily now three for three. This game being followed around the world by American forces broadcasting today. Well, Leroy Staley. He's the only married fellow on the team. <laughs> that ball actually went off the head of Kroger. From the side, there is Richard Williams, and he now has a total of six points. 81-65, seven minutes to go. Richard Williams is out of Connors Junior College in Oklahoma. Knicks shooting high. Bird is there. Wichita State has not been using Cheese Johnson in the second half. 43 points, Larry Bird from the side. That was Kroger taking the shot, it was no good. Take that 45 points for Larry Bird. Okay. Now there's Wichita State. State, call a timeout and get yourself straight. Come on. Watch Bird step in front of this rebound. He's constantly looking for position. When he gets the ball on the inside offensively, it's automatically two and sometimes a three-point play. Indiana State wants to be number one. They've got a 20-point lead with 6.22 to go, and Larry Bird has 45 points. McGuire, there are the statistics on Larry Bird. Four more points, and he'll have an all-time high, and he would have saved it for national television when his team is on. And by the way, credit some defense, because Wichita State's been averaging better than 90 points a game. They'll have to hustle to get that with 6.15 to go. One total to follow. Staley tries to steal. Out of bounds belongs to Wichita State. Well, on Tuesday night against North Texas State, Indiana State right here will start its Missouri Valley Conference playoffs, and that's going to be a tough place for North Texas State to play. And Wichita State will be at home on Tuesday night. That's definite for their Missouri Valley Conference. There's Steve Johnson. Look at him chip the hand. He's going, to come out, he's going to come out with a basket or a foul every time you give him the ball down low. One of the reasons that Indiana State wants to win the uh, Missouri Valley Conference is that the winner gets an automatic buy in the NCAA tournament. That means you don't have to play in the first round. There's Gene Johnson. Whoop. First one he's missed. He has 18 points. Uh, Cheese Johnson's going to have to play guard in pro ball. He's uh, he college as a small forward at 6'5". Larry Bird, 18th rebound. Boy, did he slow up rather than draw a charging foul. Great body control. Bailey on the pass from Miley. 87-65. They're putting the show on for Trogo. us now. Now has 18 points. 87-67. Oh, big man, dribbles the ball behind his back. Nix brings it down court. Nix is determined to shoot and get it. And that's 19 points. Bobby Knight says of Larry Bird, he says that 
He has the best sense on the basketball court of any player today on any level. Vogel is going to shoot again. He's putting him up and putting him in. Kentucky's leading South Carolina 71-63. Next, losing the ball on the Well, Ron McGuire going to have to start thinking hard. Who's going to be the MVP? Think about it for a little while. Well, there's somebody out there that's unforgettable, unflappable, unselfish, and unstoppable. And I don't know who it is, but I think that person will receive the most valuable player. Today. We'll think about it. Well, let's say we've got it. Larry Bird, $1,000 comes to Indiana State in his name. Pick a letter commendation, one of many letters and one of many commendations he'll have before his collegiate and professional careers are over. I have drawn the bird watching the... Whoop! Shirley keeps the ball. In the corner to Wire, takes one of his shots, and he's got it. Ronnie Wire. Now has a total of 10 points. Talk about Larry Bird and money. Al said all he wants is jeans. The thing he wants, if he turns professional, when he turns professional, is to be able to take care of his family. He said, if I can do that, that's all I want out of life. Look at that pass back in the mix. who passes over to Gilbert, but I think it's going to be a foul called underneath, and it might be on... Now, and that's his fourth. Watch this pass here. Here's Larry Bird, a super All-American. He gets hit, then Nick drives to the basket. He gives what simple old-fashioned give and go. Then Nick gets a little bit fancy, but the foul was called on him earlier. Nick with 19 points. Gets one and one. He has one for two from the line. Tough young man out of Chicago, Illinois, and a junior. And make no mistake, the people at Indiana State feel that even when Larry Bird is gone, they have the nucleus of a fine team for next year. They have to have a representative team. They, they, you don't replace a fellow like Larry Bird. You just got to form a different type of system. That's what Bill Hodges said. We're not going to try to do that. You can't do it. Can't replace Larry Bird. Go get somebody else to do something else to help you win. You know that um, Bill Hodges is on a one-year contract. I, I would like to go in and negotiate his contract. <laughs> oh, Eric Thune, the freshman, on his first shot on national television, knocked it in. He's just 17 years old, could not control that. And once again, we'll point out that the Shockers have had trouble holding on to the basketball. They've missed a couple of interceptions. They've let some balls dribble out of bounds. And there's a ball almost thrown away, saved by Reed. Vogel is on him. Reed's going to take a shot. Look at Gilbert's foul on no good. T. Johnson has the rebound. 4.15 oh, to go. Wow. What and they're pointing down on the floor. What a nice move he made coming at uh, Paul Nix that time. Well, he likes to mix it up, but that's his fourth personal foul. But he's got a 20-point lead. Watch this move. He gives he gives a, sh uh, a head and a hip fake here. Beautiful, like a half-back and pro football. Controls the ball. Basketball players are really so talented that it's a shame the game is so quick that you can't see the talent all the time. Steve Johnson, first end of a one and one Now has a total of 19 points. Harron High School, New York City. 20 points. Good, good friend of Butch Lee's. He might have came to Marquette if Bernard too didn't come. <laughs> Steve Reed takes it all the way in. Reed now has eight points. The Russians, the Soviet team early today, defeated Louisville 91-76. Ball is knocked out of bounds, kept in by Kalasinski, throws it to Reed, to Nix. Nix is going to take the shot with nobody else down there, but you don't need anybody else down there when you hit it. 23 points for Carl Nix. Nix is humming. He's perking out there. He wants to play. 22-point lead. Kalasinski passes underneath. Guess who's got it? Larry Bird. Already, and let's forget about the first time with four or five minutes to go that we picked an MVP. It's been so obvious. Nix from outside. Yes, sir. 77-73. Indiana State is on national television, and don't you think they don't know it? Shirley takes the shot. In and out. Nothing's dropping for Wichita State. Well, they're just playing one-on-one -on -one now, Wichita State. Staley on the feed from Nick. Ten points for Staley. 99. They're going to get their hundred. Larry Bird hasn't touched the ball the last four minutes. They're still going. There's another rebound by Bird in the long pass to Reed. <laughs> Wire knocks it away. Bird will pick it up and put it in. Uh, 
I figured there'd be 200 points scored today, but I don't know if they'll get to that many. 101, they hit the century mark, and they're saying, calling all posters, look at us. They burned our MVP 45 points, 19 rebounds, and believe it or not, he had a very slow start in the first half. Yeah, like I tried to say at the top of the show, and I blew it, Haley's Comet, they can only see it once every 76 years, and that's his nickname down here in Terre Haute, Indiana. And top gymnastics to follow from Romania on Sports World right after this game is over. Howell is in, the feed in. Galosinski takes the shot. Good, tough player. Galosinski now has a total of 14 points. 101 to 75, 20 to go. Student body wants Larry Bird to have the ball. He's got the ball, he's got the shot, he's got the ball. <laughs> He's within one point of his all-time high, 103.75. They wondered if he'd be nervous on television. No, he's very well, he's very poised all the time. Never gets that. Hobar outside, Staley, who's been having a good day. All knocked away. Picked up by Nemphy Conference. And into the NCAA. There are a lot of good teams around. I'm going to try to grab Larry Bird if I can. Get him. Okay. Kelly score, it's all over, 109-84. Larry Bird with 49 points, an all-time record.